What is going on guys? It's Nick from Surfcast in the Island and today I'm going to be showing you my rod and reel preferences or setups have you well in terms of um, back bay fishing as well as light to moderate surf conditions. Um, I say light tackle in the sense that you're not really going to be targeting 20, 30, 40 pound class fish with these setups. Although you know, you do run the chance of landing fish of this size. Um, personally, I don't recommend it. There's better options out there. That's not the purpose of this video. But anyone that has fished with me an extensive period of um, time uh, throughout their life with me knows that these are pretty much my, you know, two go-to go setups, have you will. So without further ado, let's get into it. So in terms of the first rod and reel setup I'm going to show you behind me, this is um, a Vanstall VR50, starting with the reel. Um, I've been using this reel and rod setup for, I want to say, a year and a half now. Um, and it just it, it holds up great. Um, anyone that knows about the Vanstall VR series uh, knows that it comes in black as well. Um, as of recently, they also implemented the black VR 125 and 150 I want to say about a month ago or so um, despite the color the functions are the same it's a all aluminum body um, with the exception of the Delrin handle uh, so it's very industrial looking it's that's what Van Stool is about it's about durability and standing the test of time um, in terms of stopping power pound for pound this is probably one of the small uh strongest reels for its size and its class that i've personally used it has uh 25 pounds of drag as an output which is massive um combine that with the six three to one gear ratio so you get roughly 37 inches per crank um yeah so it's very very powerful in that sense i have it spooled with 20 pound test power pro which is ideal for these back bay applications um, because the goal is you want to throw pretty much the lightest bait you can possible while presenting it correctly to these fish um, like i said many of these fish you're going to be targeting are going to be you know teen size you know 15 maybe 20 pounds at most you're not really going to get into that 20 30 and 40 pound class. Um, I don't recommend that, but um, it's just the way it is. Um, moving on to the rod, this is an 88 Tsunami Airwave Elite. Um, it's excellent, excellent. Um, I personally love it. Um, it's rated 12 to 20 pound test line. Um, I don't really pay too much attention to the line rating. I'm more so concerned with um, the range at which it'll um, effectively cast plugs, so the weight of the plug. Um, so it says the sweet spot's pretty much between a half to a two ounce, um, which is rather accurate. Um, the heaviest, personally, that I've thrown on this rod is an ounce and a half. Some of those SP minnows, heavier SP minnows, maybe a cotton cordell, that's about it. I, I've gotten close to two ounces, haven't really gone over two ounces, uh, nor do I recommend it or else you'll snap the rod, it won't perform the way you want it to. Um, it's a moderate action, so it, um, it tends to load up these lighter plugs a lot better, um, thus increasing your casting distance as opposed to something that's a moderate bass, which only bends roughly in the top third of the rod. So without further ado, I'll try to show you guys the bend on this rod. So drag. I step back. That's pretty much the tip of the rod. It bends about halfway down the rod, as expected with a moderate. Um, yeah, it's great. I've. Uh, caught many of many fish I'd say the average size I've caught is anywhere between 24 to maybe 30 31 inches on this setup and it handles it like a dream I've never fought something over a minute minute and a half with this setup um, obviously those bigger fish will push that limit to two three four maybe five minutes um, 
that's just my viewpoint on this rod and reel highly recommend it in terms of the price point um, not including tax just to get a rough estimate the uh, the VR 50 is around 500 to uh, 510 bucks um, the tsunami airwave is around I want to say 160 170 so at the end of the day um, you know, when tax and everything's taken into consideration, you're looking at a rod and anywhere between, a rod and reel, I should say, between six and seven hundred bucks, uh, maybe seven fifty, depending on where you get from. Um, a lot of people say, "Oh, that's expensive. Why would you spend that much money on a setup?" But at the end of the day, you know, especially in the world of fishing, anyone that hasn't been living under a rock knows that you pretty much get what you pay for. Um, the more you pay, chances are the longer it's going to last. The less you pay, chances are it's going to burn you out halfway through the season. So without further ado, I'll uh, get into the next setup behind me. Alright, so the second setup I'm going to show you guys is right here. Um, starting with the reel, this is a VSX series as opposed to the original Van Stalls. 150 excellent excellent reel um, it has 32 pounds of drag as an output very powerful um, combine that with uh, 475 to 1 gear ratio at roughly 27 inches per crank I believe um, similar to that of the VR50 I showed you Vanstall offers all of its customers a full aluminum body that including the spool, the handle, um, and so on and so forth. I um, believe I also have this spooled with 20 pound test um, Power Pro, which I would also recommend maybe sizing up to 30 pound test, um, would be ideal as well. Um, staying within that range of 20 to 30 pounds, I wouldn't go over really, or I wouldn't really go under that. Um, and again, you know, very, very great reel. Um, in terms of the rod, it's a nine foot ODM Genesis. Um, this is a moderate, moderate fast, and it handles up to, uh, in the sweet spot, I should say, uh, half to three ounces. And similar to that of the 8.8 Tsunami Airwave Elite, I have my personal preferences as well in terms of how much I go up and down that spectrum. Personally on this rod, um, I haven't thrown anything over two ounces. I probably fished up to two ounces on this, whether that be an E27 diamond jig, or um, possibly you know a swimmer or a heavy bucktail. Um, I just don't like how the rod performs above two ounces. That's my personal preference. Other people may have um, other opinions. That's okay too. Um, but in terms of it being a moderate fast, I'll try to show you guys how that bend differentiates from that of a moderate, uh, primarily moderate rod that I showed you with my 8.8. So, you know, it's going to be kind of difficult because it's a bigger rod, but I'll do my best to show you guys. Pretty much around the same. I mean, I'm still I'm pulling on it at a funny angle, so it's kind of hard to tell the difference. But we're, if you were to use this rod, uh, it's a totally different feel. Um, like I said, even on the rating, it's not a true moderate fast. It's between a moderate and a moderate fast. That's why it's labeled at a moderate moderate fast. Um, other than that, if you're new to the game, it's, you know, ratings could get very difficult. You could go into a store and be rather overwhelmed in terms of the endless selections of rods and reels you have at your beck and pull, if you will. Um, so going on in terms of the purposes I would use this rod and reel setup for. Um, again, you could use something like this in the back base, uh, no problem at all. Um, but also it's uh, pretty much applicable to the open beach on light to moderate conditions if you have two or three foot waves. Wouldn't really go anything heavier than that. 
I'd break out my 10 footer, so on and so forth, which I'll get on, uh, get into in a later video. That's not the purpose of this video. Um, but also, you know, if you have, you know, bigger fish around as well, it can handle fish between 15, 20 pounds, maybe 25 if you're pushing it. Um, so I personally caught fish of that size on this setup. Um, getting into the price point on the rod and reel. So starting with the reel, um, right off the bat, the 150, you're looking at 750, um, not including tax. It's a lot heftier in terms of price. When it's compared to that of the VR50, they're much more affordable. If you want to stay in that price point, I do have a video comparing um, the VS and the VR. That's not the purpose of this video again. Um, looking at the rod, you're going to spend, I want to say, at least 300 between 300 and 330 bucks. So before taxes is, is uh, even taken into consideration, you're looking at at least $1,000 right off the bat, $1,100 for this setup. Again, it's more on the pricey side, but if it's what, uh, what you love to do in terms of surf casting, like I said over and over again, it's going to stand the test of time. It's not going to shit the bed on you everywhere. Um, uh, pardon me for my language, but that's just uh, how I want to get my point across. So, again, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies either, whether that be Van Stoll or Tsunami. I'm just going based on my personal experience with these setups. Similar to that of the back base setup, the ED. Again, throw lighter bucktails, SP minnows, um, light top water, and the setup will treat you right. But um, that pretty much concludes this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Um, if you did, please like, comment, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at surfcasting underscore the underscore island. Uh, thank you. Speak to you soon. Have a nice day.